Good afternoon. Welcome distinguished guests, students, faculty and friends to this very special event, the third annual Ernest S. Koo Distinguished Lecture. Each year, the uh, Koo Lecture brings an outstanding leader in technology and engineering to our campus. We were honored to launch the series with a talk by Intel co-founder Andy Grove, followed last year by Bill Sullivan, CEO of Agilent Technologies. Today we continue this tradition of excellence with our 2014 coup lecturer, uh, Dr. Sehat Sutarcha. This year's student co-sponsor for the coup lecture is the Berkeley chapter of the IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Uh, thanks to the IEEE folks who are in their black shirts in the back, who probably greeted you, so there they are. Thank you very much. Uh, this prestigious lecture series was endowed through the generosity of Ernie and Bettine Koo, who are with us today here in the front row. Ernie was Dean of the College of Engineering from 1973 to 1980. I certainly received my degrees from him, my uh, graduate <laughs> degrees. <laughs> uh, and he's been a national leader in engineering education throughout his career. He is Professor Emeritus of EECS and a true trailblazer in the design of ICs and systems. It's an honor to be Ernie's Berkeley colleague, and I thank him and Bettine for making this splendid occasion possible. Thank you very much, Ernie and Bettine. And <laughs> it's now my pleasure to invite Ernie to say a few words, and he'll address us from right here in front. Thanks, Shanka. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And thank you for all coming to the third annual Distinguished Lecture. I would like just to say a few words about myself and the Distinguished Lecture series. I have had a very rewarding and satisfying career at Berkeley since coming here in 1956. This in large part due to my Many intimate colleagues and students I have interacted with over the years. Let me just mention a few who all came, became lifelong friends. While working at Bell Labs, I was colleagues of Charlie Desor and Don Peterson. They also came to Berkeley in the mid 50s. It was a great pleasure to have collaborative work with them here at Berkeley on research and writing undergraduate textbooks. I'm also indebted to two of my former students, Chi Ping Xu of Cadence Design, a senior vice president, and Wang Dai, who have huge impacts on the CAD industry. As you, some of you know, Wang always travels around the world. It's hard to find him. <laughs> <laughs> My sons, Tony and Ted, are here today. Tony, where are you? Can you stand up? <laughs> and, <laughs> and Ted? Both of them also went to Berkeley for their undergraduates. Tony received his PhD from Princeton and is a professor at the University of Hawaii. I guess he loves the Hawaii weather. <laughs> Ted received his MBA from Wharton, University of Pennsylvania. After graduating, he worked as an investment banker for 24 years. He is currently teaching part-time at the Haas School of business and also working with a number of startup companies. My wife, Bettine, sitting next to me, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> we decided to endorse this distinguished lecture program to invite the outstanding leaders of technology in our society to showcase and inspire students and colleagues. Yeah. 
We're very pleased to have Dr. Seha Satyuji from Marvell here today. He has been a great leader in technology and has given, <coughs> has given much back to Berkeley. As you know, there's a building named after him and his wife. We're very much looking forward to his talk. Thank you. In my role as Dean of Engineering and following in the footsteps of uh, Ernie and Dave Hodges, who's also in the front row here, you know, it's been our privilege to meet many remarkable people and business leaders from around the world. Few can rival Sehat Sathaja's vision and skill as the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of the Marvell Technology Group. Sehat Sathaja is truly one of the pioneers of the modern semiconductor age. His microprocessor designs and guiding visions have transformed many industry segments, from data storage to the high-performance, low-power chips that are driving global markets for mobile computing. His passion for electronics began early. He became, he became a certified radio repair technician at age 13 in his native Jakarta in Indonesia. He has been designing electronic components and systems ever since. In 1995, he founded Marvel Te the Marvell Technology Group with his wife, Bailey Dai, who you might have uh, had the pleasure of hearing as our commencement speaker a few years ago, and his brother, Pantas Satarja, at his kitchen table. All three co-founders are Berkeley Engineering alumni. Sehat himself earned his uh, MS and PhD in ECS after graduating from Iowa State University. Sehat has led Marvell since its inception. For his nonstop innovation, he has been awarded more than 260 patents. In December 2013, Sehat Sutaja and Wei Li Dai were honored with the Morris Chang Exemplary Leadership Award by the GSA, the Global Semiconductor Alliance. Sehat is an outspoken proponent of stronger energy efficiency standards for consumer electronics. He's also an active philanthropist, particularly in green technology and education. He and Wei Li were early supporters of the One Laptop Per Child program, helping more than two million school children in developing countries. Here at Berkeley, we are very grateful to Sehat and his family for the vision and philanthropy they've offered to our Citrus Initiative and their leadership support for the building in which today's event is being held. Sehat also serves on the College of Engineering Advisory Boards. To share his insights, Advice and ideas, I'm delighted to welcome Sehat Sutarja. Please join me in giving a warm welcome. Oh, thank you, Shankar, for, I mean, I'm humbled to be here. And I'm also really, really, so, uh, I'm really humbled to be called a distinguished lecturer, but because I never lecture anybody in my life. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, sitting in front of so many distinguished uh, researchers, professors, uh, I'm just only just a small piece of the puzzle. Uh, so I'm really, really, thank I'm really grateful. I'm really, really gra uh, happy to be here uh, to, to be able to share some of the things that uh, some of the some of the things that I learned over the years. Uh, so. Hopefully they will stick with it, maybe to some of the newer people, the younger generations. Uh, as you know, uh, I started electronics when I was 12 years old. And it's been a long journey. Uh, I started when there was nothing. Basically, uh, people built radios with six transistors. I mean, there were also five transistor radios and three transistor radios. But when I started... Uh, I started when the transistors were really made using six transistors, so I figured out how to learn how to build you know, RF amplifiers and uh, you know mixers and uh, IF amplifiers and all the different stage of the uh, analogs, I mean the audio circuitries and so on, building test equipments. But what really really excited me actually after working in these areas for 
40 years now, I didn't see the end. Uh, you know, for uh, about 10 years ago, when about 15, oh, no, sorry, uh, 19 years ago, when we started the company, people say the end of semiconductors uh, uh, right in front of us. And the more I work in this area, I realize that we are still just barely scratching the surface. Uh, uh, when our people say that uh, there's nothing to be invented, I told them, okay, I'm still working. I'm, st I'm still working in this area, and I'm still finding ways to solve problems, come up with better ways to solve problems. And what really excites me is that a lot of things that, okay, the, the things that, uh, uh, coming in the next decade, maybe even two decades from now, well, actually two decades, but maybe really in the next decade you're going to see, I can feel it, I can see that a lot of things, are, a, a, lot of, a lot of new technology is coming uh, in, front of, in front of all of us. And uh, this is the reason why I'm still working. At, uh, at Marvell we have 7,500 uh, permanent employees, 7,500 around the world. We have about more than 2,000 people in the Bay Area alone, and about more than 1,500 in Shanghai, and more than 1,200 in Israel, and so on. So total about 7,500 permanent employees with some of the consultants that we have, contractors, temporary workers. We have more than 8,000 people. So we are, we are not anymore a small uh, company uh, in, in, this, in, in the semiconductor area. Uh, we are reasonable. We have we have re reasonable uh, uh, um, amount of power to to make a difference in this in this world. So the way I look at it is not just about making money, but what what do we need to do to change the world? Uh, so instead of talking about what are the things that we built, and then you can okay, we can talk about it maybe in Q and A. What are the things that I work on uh, for those of you that are interested? Uh, I want. I thought this maybe for this for this event. I would like to talk about some of the guiding guiding principles that I use in that I that I use okay to keep me going to 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 make me uh, to, not to, uh, to keep me going to uh, to guide me uh, in, in in the times when I'm lost. Okay, what do I do? Okay, so. Uh, so I have 20 minutes to do that. Maybe I don't have enough times to uh, to talk about everything. So uh, I will have just uh, maybe be able to give you a, a few a few a few words about some of them. Uh, I'll start with the first one. I mean I have about seven. I'm, this is work in progress, by the way. <laughs> uh, I mean about about a year ago. I start. I started writing about what's important uh, in life, so that you can okay. What is it, What are important things that we that all of us need to have, so that uh, we could be successful in th in in any things that we do. Uh, so and, uh, it's not about how do you become an entrepreneur or how do you be successful in business. Uh, I I look at that. That's secondary. Uh, more important is. In, in the short short life that we have, what do we need to do? So after spending weeks and months, okay, writing this, okay, I sort things around, and I give the first one to be the, the highest priority. The first one is to be a, a, to be a giver. Uh, when I started. When I started uh, 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 studying in, in, in Berkeley, uh, this is something that I'm starting to learn. Okay, like we're working with other co uh, other PhD students solving problems. So when I work, my colleagues in the cubicles have problems, you know, I I have a habit actually sitting down with with our, our, my friends and trying to understand what problems uh, they they are encounter they were encountering. Uh, I did not realize that this is so useful, actually. Uh, and then when I went to work, I went to a small startup company after I graduated from uh, uh, Upper Berkeley. And I have a habit that every 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 time I have time for my uh, free time, like around lunchtime or during breaks, 
I talk to my colleagues in, in the company talking about what problems they are, they, are, they are trying to solve and what the solutions, and then I, I made proposal to them, why don't you do it this way? And then we exchange ideas, and I thought that was very, very, okay, later in life, like before, when we started the company in 1995, there was like seven, eight years later, I, I realized I have learned a lot more of, uh, uh, from, from talking, from helping other people uh, at, uh, at work than, than what I have learned in school. Not saying that we don't have the best school in the world here. <laughs> uh, but I really, really, I really, really learned a lot. So until about a, about a month ago, I mean, a couple of months ago when I was driving to work and there was some, somebody was talking about this. There's a guy by the name of Adam Grant. Uh, he wrote a book, I think he worked for at, at Google, and talk about something about... Uh, why helping others drive our success? And suddenly I realized, okay, yes, this is it. This is it. What I need to talk about to our, I mean, to, I am, I'm talking. I'm. This is one things, one of the things I want to talk to our own employees. So you'll be, you actually, actually, my first trial on this one. <laughs> uh, so, so I realized that uh, helping others actually help ourselves. Okay, we just don't. We just didn't know about it yet. Okay. Uh, turns out, you know, when you help others, you actually learn the mistakes that other people made, and you you learn the techniques that they have developed or they have they they they, they were they were working on, and you learn which one that works, which one uh, did not work, did not work. So when in the, okay, at some time in the future, when you encounter, when you encounter a similar problem or prob completely different problems, you actually uh, were m much more prepared, equipped with all the knowledge, all the different knowledge, or different solutions. So you can, you, and all you have to do is just connect the dots between what you have learned in the past and then apply it to the problems that you that you're trying to solve right in front of you, and. This is actually one of the most important things that I learned in my life. Okay? A lot of my, our success, uh, a lot of my success in this business, actually, because I try to, if, if anybody asking me to, to, to solve problems, along, I never reject it. I consider it as a, as, 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 as a free education for me. So, and then another thing that, that also, so we can talk a lot about all the different examples in the area. Uh, but you know, instead of talk about that, okay, let, let me talk about the second one. Second one is something that I learned from uh, learning, listening from you know Andy Grove, okay, about uh, only you know, only the paranoid uh, survive. So be paranoid. Uh, so I learned this actually. I, I took this. I took this principle in heart from day one. Okay? I always think. Is a, is something, there must be something, some, something, some other way to do uh, to, to solve this problem, that particular problem. Uh, or I, might, I must make, make some mistake. So I always check. So I never took things for granted. Okay, I always l check the detail. Okay, and people always say, "Why are you so picky?" I say, "I'm not picky. I just, I, I just want to make sure that things will work." Uh, so, I, so I. Uh, people say, but but it's like you need to trust people. Okay, I said like no, I trust people, but I just need to make sure that the, after spending so much effort and time, okay, and then when we went to see, see the customer, this thing will work. Okay, if it doesn't work, then how do I explain to the customer? Say, okay, if the mistake is so trivially simple mistakes. So uh, this is the one area that okay, I tell okay that people don't get it. Okay, people thought that. Be paranoid means you're a micromanager. You you don't trust people. It has nothing to do with that. Be, be paranoid means simply just asking the right questions, asking the, the right details uh, to ensure that if we spend all the effort, we spend all the energy working 12 hours a day, for, uh, okay, or whatever it is, okay, if you can work how many hours a day, a weekend, seven days a week, the results are not going to be wasted, and you're not going to let anybody else down. So, so this is another another principle that I thought was very that uh, 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 that's very uh, very important 
uh, uh, to me to, to not to forget. So even till today, every time I look at a problem, I always I always ask the questions. Okay, well, how 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 does it work? Okay, why is it why is it not some other way and so on? Uh, but you know, being paranoid also, being paranoid is not. If you be paranoid and you are negative persons, that's not going to help the situation. You meaning be paranoid, but you'll never do it. Right? So there's a third principle that I learned in life that you also need to be positive. Uh, not, I didn't learn that in the beginning. Okay, so <laughs> okay, I always, my wife always told me, it's like, okay, so you need to be a more positive person. Okay, okay. <laughs> so for that, I thank her for her to, to always tell me you need to be more positive. You need to be more positive. I usually told, my, told her, I said, I'm always positive. I just, okay, I, always, I think I can solve this problem. I just haven't solved it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, be positive is very important to counter this, the second principle, I mean, the second thing that, okay, be paranoid actually has a negative connotation into it. So, okay, you, you need to compensate that with being positive. So, so, uh, uh, maybe how I can talk about some of the circuits that I solve, I come up with, okay, to solve problems that people saw never been, was never, was not possible to, to do, but I don't want to bore you with the details. So, but, uh, if you look at the history, there are many people in the world, in the, okay, even in, in this country where they did great things when everybody, there were nobody believed that it could be done. For example, uh, this one I just saw a, 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 a documentary about like a few weeks ago when I was tired from swimming and, and then I was sleeping in the bed and watching uh, TV and then there was this there was this uh, there was this program talking about a guy by the name of Andrew Carnegie and uh, I think John Scott his mentor told him that you need to build a bridge to across the Mississippi River uh, for us to for us to move goods from the east to the west. But this Mississippi River is so wide, it's, and nobody had figured out how to build a bridge. And, 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 and he told him, okay, you, if, okay, if, okay, you're like, like, I know you could do it. You can build this. Uh, so he worked with the architect to, build, uh, to, to come up with the design to build this bridge, and the architect says, it's impossible. Uh, Okay, this suspension bridge that you want to build, okay, will will collapse. Okay, the steel will not be able. To, I mean, not steel. Sorry, the iron that the people used in those days to build this this bridge will only be able to uh, 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 give you like one tenth or something like the the, the amount of uh, tension that they can support. So you need steel, but steel was so expensive at that time. People. You steal to make a spoon, a spoon for the rich people, not I mean, a spoon and forks for the rich people. I don't, most other people will have spoon and forks; they will bend. Right? Yeah. So, so then he said, he said nothing is impossible. So, nothing is impossible. We can, okay, we will build this bridge. So, he, it took him a few months to search the supplier of of steel, found out somebody a supplier that could shorten the, the time to build this steel from from two weeks, like to build a rod, steel rod, from two weeks to 10 minutes. So he thought, so like, yeah, now we can, so we can build this bridge. It turns out, uh, most of the times, okay, in semiconductors, in, in the, the things that we build, it's, it's about that, about being positive and, uh, and look, look, some, look at okay, the solutions that, 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 that people have overlooked in the past, and uh, many some many of the innovation that we have developed over the over the last uh, almost two decades now at Marvel is a result of just simply just being persistent and then just okay just believe that you could you could you could you could you could you, you could solve this problem, uh, and even to, till today I'm still working. In the, okay, like uh, two years ago I work on. Designing an uh, extremely low power A to D converters. Uh, I don't want to bore with you. I know I, uh, I know I came up with an idea, uh, a solution to build one that works at you know up to 12 bits linearity in a size of like a 50 by 50 micron, micron. Okay, so 
a very tiny space. So, uh, you know, I, I did that for my PhD in that area uh, 20 years earlier, and I told myself, so like, there must be some some better way to do this. And and then I, I, I came up with a solution and asked an engineer to implement it, and it works. Uh, so, so uh, 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 you know, now, now I'm okay working something else. I'm working now okay on. See, I, I started uh, my life as an analog guy. I work on analog, RF, power supply, LEDs, okay, triax, and and on and on transformers. Uh, but now I'm working on uh, uh, processors. Okay, I've been over the last ten years been designing microprocessors. Okay, on my on the on the spare time and. Over the last few years, been working on very advanced microprocessor with a small team of people, and I asked myself, I asked the guys, okay, why the system is being built always like this way? Okay, is there a better way to do it? And I said, no, this is the only way to do it. And Intel have done it this way. Okay, IBM mainframe has done it this way. Okay, I said, but this is silly. It's like of all these years working on, okay, uh, 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 all these advanced technologies. We have now, we have, uh, when everything has gone to leap and bounds, okay, this one area in, in, the, in the computer system still stay behind in technology. I said it doesn't make sense. So, so, uh, so I, okay, I've been working on this, and I think I'm so, I finally I'm at the edge of solving this problem. So right now running, running a lot of simulation modeling to prove that it will work in any conditions. And so far, every every model's simulation that we put into it works. So, uh, so hopefully, uh, in the next uh, in the next the next year or so, we'll be able to show a, a real prototype that will work. Uh, now, so uh, now in business, okay, the fourth items is like, I don't know how much time do I have here. <laughs> Five minutes, yeah. So I don't know how many I can go through the whole thing or not. 15. Okay, all right, all right. Because I thought I was going to have some Q, a lot of Q, uh, some Q and A's. Okay. Uh, now, so the, the first three, those are three that in the past I used to talk a lot. I call it different ways. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, only just in the last year or so I, I I gave a name to this. But in the past I talk about this in lots of different words. Uh, uh, but you know the the fourth one is something that maybe a little bit a little bit uh, not too obvious. Okay, in business, okay, what we, uh, what I learned okay along uh, 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 you know by making mistakes is that sometimes when when you do uh, like the, the fourth item should be be flexible is sometimes when we are uh, when we're not when when we not too flexible. Okay, sometimes we, we, we made a mistake and we don't realize that okay, we need to change directions. Uh, I think that might be that's the different one. That's the adaptive. So, you know, like as I say, it's a, it's a work in progress. So <laughs> the bleak flexible, I think, something to do with what I learned uh, about about uh, uh, how do you solve problems. Maybe I, have to, I need to come up with a better name for this. Often when we're trying to solve problems uh, in the real world, you have to solve problems, the, the, the interesting problem. There's, there are interesting problems to solve, but there's, okay, but to finish the job, there, it comes with 90% of the works like the boring stuff, the stuff that you have to get done, okay, that, that not, so not so exciting, okay, uh, just mundane, just time-consuming. Uh, so what I learned in life is that okay, in every project, when we build, when we build things on time, when we get things done right, is when we actually be able to time multiplex, okay? like spend only like an hour or two of your time to solve the most challenging problem in any given day. That's it. You, know, you, sh you should not think that you are Superman. Okay. None of us are Superman. So if we try to spend all our okay, that eight hours or ten hours a day trying to solve that one problem, it takes the same amount of time, or maybe it takes longer if you spend eight hours or ten hours a day than to spend one or two hours a day. And what do you do with the with the other eight hours a day that you have to spend? Okay, well we work on the boring stuff. 
get the boring stuff out of the way. Get basically anything that you need to do in lo- to, to finish your job, just get it done. So what you find out that okay, uh, you will finish the boring stuff very quickly because it's so boring, you, you want to get rid of the boring stuff very quickly. And then you will have plenty of time left to work on the interesting stuff. In fact, more than enough time, and then you, then you can go back to the boring stuff and fix some of the boring job that you didn't do properly uh, in the beginning. So you went back and said, fix that, and you iterate that, and you still have plenty of time to work on the interesting, the most challenging stuff. So that works actually very well. Okay, all projects that we did, we follow this, 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 uh, this guideline, we, we were very successful. Uh, projects that we spend and people spend times on, and I noticed some groups, some, some managers did the reverse and they spend a lot of time trying to, okay, most of the time trying to solve the, the, the challenging pro, uh, problems. Projects can delay a year, sometimes two years because, because, some, because okay, you do it in the wrong order, not understanding the limit of human, human brain. Human brains can only work so much you can only tax your human brain okay, only for a few hours a day okay, on, on really, really challenging problem. The easy stuff, you can work any day. I mean, 12, 12 20 hours a day, that's, you can handle it. Uh, uh, so that's, that's uh, the, the fourth one. Now, uh, and then uh, uh, obviously uh, there are so many other things that, okay, that, okay, some of the principles in life that, that I, I learned along the way. Uh, the fifth, the, the the fifth one is is this being humble. Uh, no, I I call it be a learner. Actually, uh, part of my job as a CEO at Marvel was that okay, I have the luxury of many people want to see me to sell their company to me. So they actually I say, can I have one hour with you? And then pe- uh, my people will tell me that. So had, why are you spending so much time with these people, these companies that are hopeless? So I told them, I said, like, well, okay, I'm only giving them one hour. Okay, they're going to teach me all the things that they, they, they spend all their, uh, their life, okay, the mistake they made. So, I, okay, I, next time I'm not going to make the same mistake. Okay? <laughs> but I don't know what mistake they made. Okay, so, so I want to, I say, it's okay. They, they want to me, educate me. Okay, actually, my time is, my t- okay, this is, this is a good trade off. So, so, you know, you learn a lot by 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 by, by just accept. That's like maybe somebody else is going to be better than you. Okay, maybe. Okay, okay. But how do you know if somebody is going to be better than you unless you unless you open your mind that, that somebody is going to be that somebody have solved a problem that you you haven't solved. So in I I learned this okay also when I was in uh, college. Okay, I learned uh, 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 a friend of mine taught me uh, uh, Wing Chun. I don't know about you, but I don't know about Wing Chun anymore. No, but you know, Wing Chun is the kung fu that's Bruce Lee uh, learned the style. See, so, Yong Chun, Wing Chun. In in Cantonese called Wing Chun, and in Chinese called Yong Chun. Uh, so. So this guy is a grandmaster. You know how become he became a grandmaster in Yong Wing Chun? A friend of mine, grandmaster. He's way better than Bruce Lee. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm just like, uh, he went to all the different grandmaster of different uh, kung fu, and he went to the every one of them, and he bowed at them and said, like I say, I am. I say I heard you. You have the best. You have the best technique in this area. Okay, I would like to learn from you. So, okay, please teach me. Okay. So then okay, the other side also show me what you know, and then they spar, and and that's how he learned. He learned all the. And when he lost, he you know he completely bowed. So he said, okay, okay, I your kung fu is way beyond my kung fu. And then one day he was fighting a, a, a tai chi person. Like no, sparring with the Tai Chi Grandmaster, and the, and then he lost, and then the Tai Chi Grandmaster told him, he told him, it's like, I spent, he told the Tai Chi Grandmaster, I spent all my life, okay, and I didn't realize, okay, you, okay, there's something that's more powerful, more 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 powerful than my kung fu, 
And then the Tai Chi guy say, uh, actually, you scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so as I say, what do I miss? I say, your vertical force is not strong enough. Ah, okay. So he practiced that. He's unbeatable, un- unbeatable from then on. Yeah. So, so you need to learn. Okay. So I learned. Okay. I, I, all the knowledge that I have is not what I created from no nothing. It's I read books. I read journals. I talk to the engineers. I talk to people, cast companies that want to visit me and say, be my guests. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, you can learn a lot, a lot. I mean, so many things you can do in life if if you open up, open your mind. Uh, I say, I call it be humble. You can call it be a learner. Uh, now, the, the six, the sixth one. Okay, talk about maybe a little bit more on the business side. In business, what I found out that over the years that thing, things changes rapidly. You come up with a plan to to attack a, bi- a, a business in one one directions, and three months later you realize, after you spend all the time for so the last six months, okay, uh, to, to prepare for that plan, that the world change. Okay? So uh, you can one pretend you don't see, don't see it and then continue with your plan. Hopefully, the world did not really change. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> Always did not work. <laughs> or, okay, realize that okay, you need to adapt to the, the new world. Okay, and you need to move on. Okay, okay, that previous, no matter how much attachment you have to the previous plan, just have to accept that okay, maybe the market does not need okay, the requirement change, and because some competition changed the world. Okay, so we need to adapt to it. Uh, so this is one area that very, very hard to accept to people. When people spend a lot of their life, uh, like their life on it, and realize that what they have worked on is almost useless or not useless, it's okay, it's very tough to accept. Uh, uh, I learned that. Uh, this is, is easier to accept this if you if you follow the the the, the, the other five, four or five principles because it's like I'm going to do it right this next time. Okay, accept this. Okay, just do it better quickly before it's too late. Uh, and it's a uh, it's a uh, this is some okay this. Uh, I'm trying to ex- I'm trying to explain this to our our, our employees, uh, our managers. Uh, as I said, okay, you actually my first uh, guinea pig. Okay, I I haven't spent I haven't used this to in my communication meeting to the employees yet. Uh, so uh, uh, so this is something that I try to I try to figure out how to condense it so that so that it will be easier to understand to to people. Okay, so they can be more successful in their life. Uh, so yeah, again, I can write on bunch. There are so many things I can write this, like, and I say I need to stop at some point. So I stop at this point. I stop to be second. Like, let me stop at the seventh item. So in case of anything, you just need to believe in to be to to, to believe in something. So, but okay, uh, and a lot of things in the world okay uh, actually works just because you believe in. Something. So in technology, actually, you must believe in fundamentals, in in uh, fundamental physics. Too many of people that I know in life, they got their PhDs, and they learn of the Ohm's law and Coulomb's law and Kirchhoff law, and then when they come up with a circuit, and I look at it, that violates Kirchhoff law. That doesn't work. And I say, how do you know? I say, okay, okay. We simulation say it works. I say, no. Okay, it must be an artifact. This just didn't work. Okay. So often the mistakes you could easily weed out a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, just simply by uh, believing in this fundamental law of physics. Uh, uh, 
so you know, that's one belief, right? Belief in uh, in in the fundamentals and in in business. Yeah, there's no law of physics in business. In business, you have roadmaps, industry roadmaps. Okay, uh, like Moore's law is industry roadmap. Uh, one of the one of the failure, okay, not failure. Okay, one of the mistakes that we made as a company, uh, Marvell X, uh, four years ago, belief, okay, belief that Moore's law was slowing down. So when we built our new generation chips, at that time, certain groups, not all the groups, certain groups believed this that. Uh, 40 nanometer was too ex- was too expensive for them. Okay? For these other groups, okay, yeah, they can accept the 40, uh, 40 nanometers. Okay, they can just continue to do it be, uh, because accuse it because the customer can afford it. And uh, we had to screw up. Okay, that we we built our chips. Okay, we had 55 nanometer for two years longer than is necessary. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, in other groups, like our storage group, for example, we built 40 nanometer like two years earlier than that. So, so if you, uh, if you uh, sometimes when you don't know what the future is going to, to to look like, you just have to believe in that roadmap, okay? And then something will happen. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, because you're not the only one there trying to solve this problem. The equipment suppliers began to solve this problem. The lithography equipment, the, the implanter guys, the, the silicon germanium uh, epi reactor guys, began to solve this problem. Uh, so if you believe that other people are just as smart as you, okay, there are plenty of smart people in this world, they can solve this problem. And it will all, as long as we believe there, there's people all working and not taking a vacation, okay, this, the problems will be solved eventually. So just work on that plan to follow that roadmap. And uh, uh, this is the reason why okay, today, uh, today okay, it's like, okay, we, okay, we, we made a mistake once, so we don't have to repeat it again. Now, we work on FinFET, people say, FinFET is so expensive. Mask cost is expensive. Tape out cost is expensive. Okay, we have so many chips that we need to build. How can we afford so many different tape outs? I say, okay, find another solution. Come up with a different solution to solve that problem. Okay, just because you have a problem doesn't mean the world is going to solve. Okay, somebody is going to solve this problem. We're, we're going to be able to be more successful. So, so, so this is one area that uh, I thought was important. Okay, that believing in 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 Okay, fundamentals physics in this one. Second is believing in the industry in roadmap. Believing in the other people in this world. They're they're smart. They they will solve solve those problems for you. Okay, you're not you're not solving this problem by yourself. If you if you if you need to build if you need to build chips with glass interposer. Oh, but the equipment supplier is not there. Who say that? Okay, it's a company in New York is building that equipment to solve this problem. So there are other people, they are working on this kind of stuff to, 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 to make the glass interposer, for example, to be low cost. Just, it's not manufacturable yet. There's no production fab, I mean, factory yet to do this. But a year, two years from now, they will be there. So always, always this keep in mind. Anyway, so uh, uh, I thought, okay, that will, hopefully that will be useful. Okay, uh, I don't know, it's like, uh, I, sh- I should talk about detail Okay. So I could talk about some of the things, okay, the, about some of the circuit stuff, that some of the pattern already being granted. I could talk about it, but I don't know. Maybe that's too boring for 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 this uh, for for people that are not an okay an analog persons. That for those again, we can have a separate discussion later on one on one if you wanted to. Uh, so this is more g- uh, general. I thought a principle that I use okay to uh, to to, to that I kept my, uh, with me uh, when I'm when I'm lost. Uh, thank you. Take some uh, questions from the audience.
first preference to students. I don't. Um, <clears throat> my name is Tom. I'm a X major. And X major. Yeah, I'm okay. just wondering uh, what kind of effect do you see 3D printing having on the semiconductor field in the near future? Uh, question on uh, the effect of effects of 3D printing. Uh, that's a it, uh, that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, the 3D printing is still at the, its infancy. I think it's a very uh, very uh, it's going to be very important uh, in everyday lives of, of our, our everyday lives. Uh, People talking about building 3D printing to build 3D, uh, uh, making chocolate chip cookies and uh, candies. I think there's a lot. A lot of these applications initially will start with a, a simple application that people can appreciate. But in the future, you could one could argue that in semiconductors you could build using 3D printing to let's say build substrates for uh, 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 you know, complex geometry substrates. Uh, uh, will it make build uh, sem well build semiconductors? Okay, you already 3D, in, in a sense you're building 3D structure already. Just you don't call it printing; it's called lit lithography. So okay, because the geometry is getting so small, so we, that will continue to be on lithography. But there are people talking about building uh, self-replicating self-replicating uh, structures. Uh, yeah. To different, uh, like in, in flash technology, yeah, people going from, okay, as, as you know, uh, transistor geometry is uh, uh, reaching to the, to the, to the, I mean, the, once the, as transistor gets smaller, the lithography become a the limiting factor, uh, and the cost of this lithography equipment is going sky skyrocketing. Uh, so people trying to do it vertically, or they are trying to solve the cost of making things smaller still. So. They are doing 3D structure versus doing self-replicating structures, but in the 3D printing, uh, there will be there'll, there'll be a lot of things that we can prototypes or, 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 or small volumes, uh, but okay, uh, but you know, but different types of design that you can easily use you can use the printer printer for. So very very actually very. Very interesting. We're actually supporting a few startup companies in uh, in, in in this area. Uh, we we built printer chip actually. We have one of our businesses to build chip to print prints on like HP printers. Okay, your HP printer printer comes with, with our print electronics. But we say, why do, can we use these print electronics to help some of these these companies that are working on 3D printing to build yeah, uh, 3D structures? So, so I, I was going to follow up. You, you know, I came to your office one day, and you, uh, I must say, you uh, really amazed me when you said, uh, you know, you were working on this power factor design, and you wanted to put a radio in every light bulb. And, uh, and this was just sort of a wonderful for energy efficiency and so on. But I, I think maybe the question, yesterday on NPR, there was, uh, you know, uh, a surgeon who had uh, been... Uh, working on uh, sort of these uh, tracheal cubes that collapse in infants. And there was a, a story about sort of 3D printing. And they left with saying, you know, there's a need to integrate electronics into this uh, 3D printing of uh, tissue for these. Uh, okay. So since this is, you have this vision of sort of embedding electronics, especially wireless, what, what is, uh, what would you, how would you, pro, uh, how would you sort of think about where this is headed? Uh, yeah. So obviously, this 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 is a, a wide open field. They, they, are, they are talking. We're talking about bioelectronics, and uh, this is beyond the scope of what okay our mission at the company. Uh, uh, so what Marvel is focused on is okay, like how do you use some of the knowledge that we have built over the last 20 years uh, uh, to to build uh, electronics for the masses. So. Talking about this uh, solving energy efficiency, and how do you build this pico size radio? Okay, uh, uh, still using standards. So we uh, we just uh, 
of, uh, like uh, several years ago, we built our, developed our first generation uh, Zigbee radio. It's a single chip device. There's everything you, you need, everything. Just, all you need is just one crystal outside, and then that's it, just an antenna. Uh, so uh, the challenge in, uh, in, often, in, uh, often in this area is not building the chip anymore. It's building the, the software, the infrastructure, uh, the ecosystem. So we've been spending the last few years working on how to, with the various different companies, okay, to, to get all the software protocol stacks to, to work with the idea that one day our homes, every light bulbs, okay, should have a wireless connectivity so you can dim, you can, you can turn off and on, okay, on demand or on the, based on the different time. Like your bathroom could be turned on or 10, 20% at midnight and you turn it on versus during the day, for example. It knows, it learns, learns from your, your behavior or other people's behavior. Thank you for the great lecture. Um, what was the first invention or technology made you start your company? Um, can you tell us about um, what motivates you start? Uh, yeah. Company? So I when I got my PhD in uh, an, uh, analog to digital converters, like designing A to D, so analog linear circuits. So my first job was to uh, uh, I worked for a company called Microlinear, uh, a small startup company doing analog circuit, and uh, and uh, actually, my professor Paul Gray would told me, I said, you should not go to the small startup company. I said, why? I said, why? Why is it? I said, well, this is a small company. You, you can't, how can you learn from anybody? Okay, it's like you need to work for you know, Bell Labs or HP Lab at the time, where you have other, so many other PhDs okay, that you can work with. So, but I didn't listen to him. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm going to work for this small startup company. Okay, I was stubborn. Right? I was really, really stubborn. So. I worked there for like a year, a year, and I realized, I was like, yeah, he's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been spending almost time okay, helping people, okay, so trying to help them what to do. I came up with a proposal. I came up with a proposal to design a uh, disk drive rechannel, digital, digital disk drive rechannel to microlinear. I said, after my first project. And it got rejected. I said, okay, uh, I'm out of here. So I'm going to find some other, <laughs> some other job. So then I, Came to realize uh, I worked for a small company to do uh, digital. I realized maybe I've been working for analog all my life since I was 12 years old. Time to work on digital. After all, the world is digital now. So okay, I need to move on to the new stuff. Okay, so I work on digital DSP for video compressions. I work on microprocessors. I work on video graphics and you know, all kind of, all kind of stuff. And then I realized. One day I woke up and said, like, well, the world is not digital, and the world is still analog. Okay? So <laughs> say there's this, okay, this area that nobody is paying attention to, namely integrating analog functionality with the digital functionality of a single chip in CMOS, digital CMOS, not analog CMOS. Not with, at the time, people talking about, you need double poly capacitors to build analog circuits. I said, no. Okay, we can do it in digital. So that's how we started the company, building the first re-channel, uh, PRML re-channel for hard drives, running at 240 megabit per second, 270 megahertz uh, in 0.5 micron, 5 volt transistor, not 3.5 volt, 3.3 volt transistor, very slow transistor. Uh, so that's how we started the company. Uh, thank you for your talk, Dr. Uh, Starja. My name is Pablo Paredes, and I do research in human potential and stress management. So I was wondering, and technology for that, so I was wondering, do you think we can build technology to accomplish all those things, to be a giver, be a paranoid, be positive, to help human be more like that? No. Or do you need, do we need less technology to do that? Uh, this is the, yeah, thank, thank you for that questions. Uh, I'm not suggesting we can use technology to be, to, we cannot make human better using, okay, to, be, to be like this by tech, using technology. No, I think this is something that, 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 that every one of us learn, for thousands of years, people learned it through this. The most successful people, thousand years ago, knew this. The one that did not know this, okay, okay, well, okay, eventually failed, okay, in their business or in their empire, whatever it is. So it has nothing to do with technology. Now, talking about technology is a different subject. Uh, technology, this is a completely different subject. I actually concerned. I'm. I'm concerned that despite the fact that all of us wants technology, 
there's actually a downside about having advanced technology, like in certain areas. Okay, uh, uh, for example, if we make cars to drive by themselves, actually it's great because I can go to a restaurant, I can leave the car, I can left the car in front of a restaurant, told the car, okay, get lost, okay, pick me up, <laughs> okay, two hours from now, and then two hours from now you tap, tap on your phone and then the car pick you up in front of a restaurant, beautiful. Okay, I mean, what can, what else can you expect? That's maybe most of us would like to have that. But there's a downside for for uh, for having having technology. Technology create new jobs, also kills other jobs. So what kind of jobs you can get killed if cars can drive by themselves? Well, taxi driver, limo driver, bus drivers, train drivers. Okay, uh, because now we say cars can buy drive drive by themselves. Okay, we can share cars. Perfect. We can reduce the the the, the, the waste of everybody having the old cars. Perfect. That's true. But okay, but then you the effort, you need to we need to be prepared. We need to prepare the the event, uh, the event, eventuality that where car will drive by themselves. We cannot stop technology progress. By the way, we just have to realize that there's a downside. So we need to react to counter those downsides. So create, retrain our workforce okay, so they can have other types of jobs when this thing happens. Uh, you, you know, I also told you there's about 75 people who are on the outside. So those of you that on the outside, we don't have the technology, but if you want to come in to ask questions, we can take your questions in the interim, please. Um, thank you very much for your stories. I love it very much. My name is Miao, and I'm now doing research in Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Um, I have a question about the first recept, be a giver. Um, you know, you, you mentioned that uh, when we help others, sometimes it's help out, help, help just help us. But uh, it means still something drive us to help others. I mean, we got reward or we got a payment, we got educate. Yeah. Have you ever thought about just help others or? Just want to others be better, or the world be better. Yes. I want to know what do you think. Thank you. Yeah. So, so uh, I mentioned the, the, the by the, the guy by when I, I was listening to radio okay, on the way to work. There's the guy by the name of Adam Grant. He wrote he wrote a book. Okay. To, he, he he basically differentiated uh, there are three class of people. One is called a giver, and on the other extreme is called a taker. Always want to take things for other people. And then there will be the majority of people in the middle. It's called uh, matcher. I say matcher. Like, what did you do for me before I do for you? If I'm going to do this for you, what are you going to do for me? It's called matcher. A lot of people are okay, trying to... Okay, most people are actually... It, it's discounting. It's like this bartering. Okay, it's... it's what, the, what he said, the most successful people are the ones that always well to help other people. So in technology, uh, as I said earlier, I learn a lot by trying to help my colleagues. Okay? Because okay, what, okay, basically, I'm learning the, their mistakes. Okay? By learning their mistakes, proposing a solutions, I learn from their process. So I, just, I didn't realize, okay, I, well, I didn't need anything, that knowledge, but 20, 30 years later, I found out I need that knowledge. Okay, I don't have to, I don't have to scramble to find that knowledge. I already learned through it. So uh, I think we'll continue the questions over the after we end the uh, formal part of this. So say hi. This has been really a fantastic uh, hour with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and did you? Have you know, uh, Sam was saying that he was going to use two slides, but you see, he cut it down to one slide. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Because I'm also a terrible slide maker. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of our colleagues, I'd like to present you with a small remembrance of today's event. It recognizes our deep appreciation for your of your commitment. Aren't you going to put it on? Uh, uh, you're going to put it on him. <laughs> Yeah.
recognize that deep appreciation for I your commitment to the college. Of, yeah, yeah, this is really, you know, you come to the football games. So, uh, yeah. you no, know, we'll win next year, so oh, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be positive. Be positive. Many thanks to you. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Rayleigh Dai for her many years of support of the college. We are all most grateful. Thank you also to our IEEE student co-sponsors, and most especially to Ernie and Bettine Koo for providing this outstanding forum. We'd like to present you also with small tokens of our appreciation. Uh, the same football jacket. I have a question. Does this come with a lifetime membership to the football game? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can arrange that. <laughs> John Wilton, I hope you're listening on the web. <laughs> so I hope all of you could join us for a reception right outside in the Kwame Atrium. Thank you all for being with us today, and go Bears! All right, thank you. Thank you.